Oh, it's great. <laughs> oh, it's great to be home. <laughs> thank you, 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 thank you. Oh, it's really great to be in a room full of our friends and um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, thank you. I, first of all, I just want to say to Chad, um, Chad, you have been an extraordinary leader. You continue to be a leader for such a long time, and um, your leadership at HRC has been over some of the rockiest and most celebratory times in our movement. And you have, throughout that time of your leadership, led with such dignity and purpose and conviction and you have inspired us when there were dark days, when there were days when we wondered if we really could actually ever get some of these achievements done and you inspired all of us to have courage and I thank you, I thank you. Can we please applaud Chad Griffin? So it's great to be here tonight, and um, actually my first HRC dinner was in the late 1990s when my dear friend Mark Leno, who was the first LGBT member of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, it invited me to join him for that dinner, and I have been coming to these dinners ever since. And Boy, have we seen some things happen in the interim years. I mean, what have we seen? We've seen so much, and there's so much that should give us optimism, but we still have so far to go. And so I am here to thank everyone. There are folks who are leaders in this room who have been supporting the work of HRC for decades. And the work that has been accomplished is a lot to be celebrated, but there's so much more to do. And in particular, now, you know, we are in the midst of a whole situation. <laughs> um, this is an inflection point, guys. This is an inflection point in the history of our country, and I think we all know that. This is a moment in time that is requiring us, each as individuals and collectively, to look in a mirror and ask a question. That question being, who are we? And I think what we all know is part of the answer to that question is we are better than this. We are better than this. And so this is a moment in time that is requiring us to fight for the best of who we are and fight we will. We also know that in this inflection moment, it is challenging us to restore the importance of truth and justice in our country. Truth and justice. Because here's the thing, there are a lot of folks in our country who are rightly feeling a great deal of distrust in our government and its institutions and leaders. And the thing we know about a relationship of trust is that by its very nature, a relationship of trust is a reciprocal relationship. You give and you receive it. And one of the most important ingredients in trust is truth. But there's a funny thing about truth. Speaking truth can often make people quite uncomfortable. And so for those of us who stand behind a microphone and behind a podium, there's an incentive that when we speak, we'll make everybody feel happy, we'll make everyone feel lovely, we will sprinkle lovely dust all over the room, and everyone will applaud, and job will have been done. Well, speaking truth doesn't always accomplish that goal. But here's the other thing about speaking truth. Yes, people may walk away from that conversation thinking, you know, I didn't particularly like what I had to hear. But they'll also walk away from that conversation knowing it was an honest conversation. So HRC, let's continue to speak some truth. Let's continue to speak the truth that right now in our country, we have seen a level of hate rise like we have not seen in a long time. And in these last two and a half years, it has received new fuel. We have seen 
and know to be true that the existence of homophobia, transphobia, racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia are real in this country, and we must speak that truth each and every day. When we see it, we must understand it is born out of hate. We must understand that we are strong together and that whenever anyone is the subject of that hate, which we know has reached lethal proportion in our country, that we must stand together and never let anyone stand alone in their fight. No one should be made to stand alone in their fight. And at its core, HRC has always stood for that. No one will stand alone in their fight. Let's speak truth. We have seen an administration in our country over the last two years who claimed that they would be a friend of the LGBTQ community, but instead they remained silent when the LGBT community was attacked in Chechnya to Egypt. Let's speak these truths. Let's speak the truth that there have been judges nominated. I am a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee. There have been judges nominated who called transgender children proof of Satan's plan. Let's speak the truth about the hate behind those words and the need to fight for what represents true justice in our country. Let's speak the truth that it is not justice in our country when you ban men and women from serving their country who love their country and are prepared to die for their country. Let's speak the truth about the need to, re to restore truth and justice in our country. Let's speak the truth. Chad mentioned it. Let's pass the Equality Act in the United States of America. And finally, recognize that everyone should be treated under the law and including by our federal government. Let's speak the truth. Let's speak the truth that the fight for LGBTQ rights is a fight for civil rights, and until all of us are equal, none of us are equal, and none of us will receive justice. And let's speak another truth that I do believe is critically important for us to not only speak but to know and believe in our hearts and our souls, and in particular now, when we have such powerful voices that are trying to sow hate and division among us. Let's speak this truth, and I've been traveling all over our country in the last few months, and I know it to be true, and the truth is this. The vast majority of us have so much more in common than what separates us. Let's speak that truth. Let's speak that truth, especially when there are people trying to sell this stuff, <laughs> bleep bleep, <laughs> trying to divide us and have us point fingers at each other. No, let's speak the truth. The vast majority of us have so much more in common than what separates us. And I know it to be true based on what I call the middle of the night thought. Some people refer to it as the three in the morning thought. Other people refer to that moment as the witching hour. You know what I'm talking about. When you wake up in the middle of the night with that thought, that thing that's been weighing on you, sometimes you wake up in a cold sweat, well, for the vast majority of us, when we wake up thinking that thought, it is never through the lens of the party with which we are registered to vote. For the vast majority of us, when we wake up thinking that thought, it is never through the lens of some convenient little simple demographic that a pollster tries to put us in. And for the vast majority of us, when we wake up thinking that thought, it usually has to do with one of just a very few things. Our personal health, the health of our children, our parents. For so many Americans, can I get a job, keep a job, pay the bills by the end of the month, retire with dignity? For our students, can I pay off those student loans? For so many people in our country, can I help get my family member off their opioid addiction? The vast majority of us have so much more in common than what separates us. And so when we fight the fight that we are in for equality and for justice and for freedom, let's hold on to the knowledge that 
when we are fighting this fight, people will at some point finally get the fact that all people should be treated equally under the law. We have seen that progress. We have seen that progress in our country. Let's hold on to the fact that as we fight this fight for justice and equality, that one of the strengths of our nation is that by nature, we are aspirational. We are aspirational as a people. We have the ability to see what can be unburdened by what has been. We are aspirational. We are a nation that was founded on noble ideals, those ideals that were present in the writing of the Constitution and all of its amendments, and the Bill of Rights and the Declaration of Independence, and those words we spoke in 1776, that we are all equal and should be treated that way. We are aspirational. We are also clear-eyed. HRC, we all know all too well. We've not yet met those ideals. We've not yet reached them. But the strength of who we are is we will fight to get there. And we will fight to get there seeing what can be unburdened by what has been. We will fight to get there knowing that the fight for the soul of our country is worth it. We will fight to get there based on knowing that when we are in a fight born out of optimism, we win. And so I say this to say that these last two years and some months have certainly caused a lot of us to start speaking to an inanimate object called a television <laughs> and to shout at that thing. It has caused a lot of us to go through individual and group therapy. It has caused a lot of us to, to feel a bit of despair and depression and anxiety and fear. And I say, don't let the bad guys win. Don't let them win. When they are spewing hate, when they are trying to divide us, let us remember our strength. We have so much more in common than what separates us. And the final point I will make is this. The fight that is HRC's fight has been a collective fight. It is a universal fight. It is a fight for the best of who we are. It is a fight for the ideals of our country. And it is a fight born out of patriotism. This is a fight that is born out of love of country and knowing knowing and believing what we can be and fighting for us to get there. So I say fight on, fight on, fight on, fight on. We are going to do this, HRC, and I thank you for the leadership in this room. Thank you.